things first, if you're not already, you need to move <coughs> to the middle row of seats and it has to be the first three rows you have to be in. Sorry, but that's, that's the way it is. <coughs> so you gotta move now, because I don't want to be looking all over the place. Okay, so first things first, um, my one sentence sermon is don't play hide and seek with God. And no, it's not. Okay, yeah, that, I was going to say that. Okay, um, so me and Aubrey are going to play a game of hide and seek right now. And she's going to have 10 seconds to hide anywhere in the room that she wants. And I'm not going to look. Okay, so her time's up. So, wow, I wonder where she is. So, I know Aubrey really, really well. Like, we're best friends. Like, we're basically family. We are family. There's no denying that. So, I know where she's hiding. I'm not going to be like, like, just how God knows you so well, he's going to know where you're hiding when you're hiding. So, I can see her. I can talk to her. I can tell her, like, hey, I found you. So, some of the reasons that we might hide is because we're either trying to protect ourselves from vulnerability and judgment, or we've done something wrong and we think we're gonna get judged for it, and we just don't want people to know the real us, I guess you would say. Um, so whenever we do play hide and seek with God, we're hiding, but he always knows where to find us. And there's nowhere we can go where he won't be able to find us. Like how Aubrey is hiding here, sometimes when we're little, we play hide and seek with our parents, they always know where we are because we have our go-to spot and we can't fully hide from them. They're gonna know where we are because they know us so well. So we can put up, we put up this barrier of, I can't see you, you can't see me. And when that happens, we pretend like God can't find us. We pretend like he doesn't know where we are. And that's really, really bad because, you know, we shouldn't do that. Like, God knows where we are. But when we put up that barrier, we're also creating a disconnection with God where on our end, we can't talk to him. And he's trying to talk to us, but we put up a barrier where we can't hear, hear him and we can't feel his presence because we've created that barrier. So when you're hiding, it creates a temporary safe environment, but it prevents that genuine connection with God. And that safe place might feel safe for a while, but in reality, it just creates even more vulnerability and anxiety and all that stuff because normally when we have that barrier up, we can hear the world and we can hear everything that's happening in the world, but we can't hear what God is trying to say to us. So all of the things that are happening in the world, like people dying, all of the bad stuff is coming into your life, but instead of being able to take it and give it to God, you're taking it and you have that barrier to where it just piles in on you. And that creates more anxiety, more stress, all that kind of stuff. And most of the time we hurt ourselves more than we will let anybody else hurt us. Because we think what we say about ourselves is true. We think all that stuff about us is true because it's what we think. And what we think is always right. That's just the human way of thinking. So when we have that barrier, we put a fake face on the outside. We make everything, we make everybody else think we're okay. We make everybody think that we're just perfectly fine. Like our lives are perfectly fine. We're just hiding because, you know, we can. But on the inside, you're destroying yourself. And... It's not something new that we've been doing. We've been doing it since the beginning of time with Adam and Eve. And when they did it, can you put that scripture up, the Genesis? So it says, the word of the Lord came. Yeah, there we go, there, there we go. That's the right one. Sorry, guys. This, <coughs> sorry, that was confusing. So the man and his wife heard the sign of the Lord God as he was walking into the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from him, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden, but the Lord God called on to men, called on, yeah, called to the men, where are you? So all, I, I say obviously and like a lot, so you're just gonna have to deal with that. So obviously he knew where they were. He asked them where they were because he was giving them a chance to come out. And he wasn't mad at them. He wasn't gonna hold that 
But yes, what he, they did was really wrong because they did the one thing he asked them not to do. But he wasn't going to hold that against them. He was going to forgive them for what they did. They just didn't believe that he was. So we've been doing this since Adam and Eve, and it's not something new. So when you are in the middle of that, you might not know you are, but God knows you are. And in our moments of like fear and doubt, we can't escape what him watching for us. We can't escape what his plan for us is. And so what makes this bad? Because that's the question. Because when you're doing it, you might be like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'm just like, I'm with myself right now. I'll figure out God later. But we don't know if we can figure out God later because we don't know if we have the next day even. We're only promised today. And in the Bible, a lot of people think that God says that he will never give us more than he can handle. I did my research, and I know that's not true. God says that he will never give us more than we can handle without him. When we have God, we can handle the big stuff because we have him to help us. But when we're alone in our shelter underneath our safe blanket, we can't handle it because God is trying to talk to us. God is waiting for you when you're under your blanket. He's waiting for you to come to him. And what makes this really bad is when we're in the ice, when we're underneath our emotional blanket, it leads to isolation and disconnection and all of those things that we can't deal with. And when we avoid what God is trying to say to us, then that leads to even more shame and even more disconnection when we do eventually come to him. And when solitude from him may feel great for a little bit, it's not going to fully fulfill you because the world isn't going to give you, and like everybody says that, the world won't fulfill your desires, the world won't do this, but that's true no matter how many times we hear it. And when we're trying to listen to the world over God, when we build that barrier, we're listening to the devil because we're in the middle of a storm, we're in the middle of something big in our life, and instead of... Y'all can hear me then. So, and instead of when you're in the storm, keeping your focus on God, you've let your roots come loose and you're not fully listening to him. So, when, as soon as you feel one of your roots to come up, you look the other way. And that's when the devil says, run. And we listen to him because we don't have our focus on God anymore. We don't have that that focus on God to where we know exactly what we're doing, where we're going. We've let our focus shift. And that's when we start building our wall. That's when all that bad stuff starts happening. And that's when we let the bad stuff start to get to us. And whenever, so now you can go to Jonah. So like how whenever God asked Jonah to do something. Oh, Y'all can hear me. So whenever... He was, so God, if you don't know the story of Jonah, this is a quick summed up version. So the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of that guy, and told him, go, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because of the wickedness, because its wickedness has come before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to, y'all, I'm not good with reading or names, so bear with me, to the J place where he found a ship bound for that port. After playing, after playing, after paying, wow, sorry, after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. So even Jonah did this. All the people in the Bible who God like really believed in and was like, oh yeah, you got this, even they did it. So when we think, oh, we're just one more person that God doesn't have to worry about when we're hiding, he will worry about us because he loves us. And just like how I know Aubrey so well, I know where she is, I know her and I love her, so I'm not going to just leave her when she's trying to hide from me. And so Jonah tried hiding, but God stopped him before he could actually hide. And 
God tried stopping us before we could hide, but we just kept on avoiding him and ran anyways and hid anyways because we didn't care. We wanted to be safe, so we went to the closest safe place there was once we took our eyes off of the Lord. And so Jonah got on the ship and went, and in the middle of the, the their ship to tar, their sail, I guess you would say, to shop tor, Tarshish, um, they got stopped by a big storm. And then God was like, throw over the person who did the bad, who's running, something like that. And then they all played this little game. I'm going to call it a game. It wasn't a game back then, but I'm going to call it a game because I don't really know what it was. But, and like the bag landed on Jonah, yeah, Jonah. And so they all felt bad because they didn't want to throw him over because they felt bad because they liked, they liked him because he was a likable person. I'm sure he was. And, but he was like, no, I need to stop hiding and running. So he, he got thrown over, but when he got thrown over, God wasn't going to just let him die. He made these whales follow him, but they weren't actually whales. They were just these big fish that we, they were these big, big fish. They weren't whales. We say that they're whales. They're not whales, guys. And so he made the fish follow him, and then he made the fish swallow him. And all that Jonah had to do in the belly of the whale was talk to God. Because he didn't have a phone to play on. He had no other distractions besides God. And God had a distraction. So he just had God to talk to. So when he was talking to God, that's like the only thing he had at that moment was to pray. <clears throat> For those three nights and those three days, that's all he could do. And that's how he built his faith back. And that's how he let his guard down. Was he took the blanket off and he came to the realization that I need to stop hiding. And if you are hiding from God, then every Wednesday when you come to youth, because you want to have that facade, that fake face on, you want people to think, I'm fine. So you come to youth, you run through the motions, you act like you're fine, but deep down, you know and God knows that you're not. So you'll come in, you'll put a fake face on, and at the end of the service, when they're like, and if you want to rededicate your heart to Jesus, say this prayer. You say the prayer, but you do not mean it. Because you think that you can do it next week. You have next week. There's always going to be a next Wednesday. No, there's not. God does not promise us tomorrow. And we have to come to the realization of that, that we do not have the next day. We only have today, and we can only focus on today. So what you have to do is you have to do what Jonah did. I'm not saying run from God and hope he gets swallowed, because you don't want to do that. You don't want to get swallowed by a big fish, because nowadays the acid would destroy you in their stomach. I'm not going to talk about biology. Um, and so all you can do is find a safe place, whether that's wherever that is for you, and you just have to pray. And there's going to be these uncertainties, because if you've been hiding from God either for a few hours now, few days, weeks, months, or even years, because I know from experience that you, you will hide, and you'll think everything's fine. You'll come in with a fake face, and you'll tell your parents you're fine. You'll tell everyone you're fine, because you don't want them to know. You don't want anybody to know about it, because that makes you in the awkward position of, I don't think anybody else has ever done this before. I think I'm the only person that's done this, but you're not. And I'm telling you from experience, you are not the only one that's doing this because I've done this for years. I've put a fake face on and I've hid when people die in my life, when people get sick and get more and more sick, you question it. And so you run and you hide. And you think that you have Jesus back sometimes, but then the next day you don't. And then you know that you were just convincing yourself otherwise because you wanted to have Jesus back but you weren't ready to lift your guard up. And so you're gonna have the doubts, you're gonna have the fears that what if God left me? What if he's not waiting for me anymore because I took too long to make up my mind? And when you've taken all that time, those like three years, you don't know if God's still waiting. You question if God even exists because you have blocked off hearing him. 
And when you put that blanket up, you can't let things out and not let things back in. You have to deal with them. Everything just bounces back onto you. And so when you're under that blanket and stuff, there's all those what ifs. And there's always gonna be what ifs in your life. There's always gonna be that, but maybe he's not there. But maybe, but maybe I can just wait till next week because it's not that big of a deal. But maybe, maybe no one else feels this way, so maybe I shouldn't talk to anybody about it. Maybe, maybe God is really disappointed in me and I really like shouldn't just go back. Maybe I should just stay in hiding because it's just easier that way. I've gotten used to hiding. I'm comfortable with hiding. I know how hiding works. I'm not trying something new or going back to something that I'm not comfortable with. Because your walk with God is not comfortable. And I'm going to tell you that now. Your God walk is never going to be all happy, yay, butterflies and rainbows. No. It's going to be hard. Because when you're at your peak, the devil's going to grab you. Once you've gotten baptized, once all of that good, once, once everything good in your life is happening, the devil's going to tear it all away from you. The devil's going to make something bad in your life happen. And you might be like, why is God letting all this happen? But he has a purpose for it. And you're not going to see the purpose now. And you're not going to see the purpose when you're trying to hide. You're going to have to let God in and lift up your guard. Because even though you have all those fears, even though you have that fake face out there that everybody thinks you're fine, you're not. You know you're not. God knows you're not. And people really close in your life know you're not. And that's something we have to come to the realization of. That it's going to be hard, but nothing is harder than hiding. Because you have to do 10,000 things at once on your own. So then, when you're ready to come to God... And you're ready to put that, lift that guard up, lift your safety blanket up. You have to just go for it. You have to be ready. You have to be all in or not in. Because there's no in between. You can't half go to God and half stand a blanket. You can't just like come out halfway and be like, okay, God, yeah, I hear you. And then sneak back in. You have to just throw the blanket off. And whenever you're ready to come out of hiding, Okay. You just throw the blanket on and you run to God and he has his arms wide open and he's waiting for you. <laughs> and then you're out of hiding. And then you're ready for God and you can run to God. And you might think that God cannot deal with all of that, all of the stress that you've built up from the past years. You might think that God is not able to handle it because it's just too much. If it was too much for you, it's too much for him. But it's not. God cannot handle anything that you can't handle because he's ready for you. He created you. He knows what's in your life. When you were under that blanket, he knew everything that was happening to you. And you might think, how can you pay attention to so many people at once? I don't know that answer, but he knows that answer. And you just have to trust that he knows. You have to trust that it's a walk with God and you have to deal with the really high ups and the really down lows. And if you haven't experienced a time of hiding from God, you will. You will experience a time when you are trying to hide from him. When either something really, really, really de detrimental, that's a word, has, come, has happened to you and you just can't deal with it, but God can deal with it with you. You will be able to handle it with him, but you have to keep him with you. You can't just like kind of let go, but like have him as like a safety string in case something happens. That's not how that works. You have to be all in or all out, and I suggest you go all in because it's a lot easier. A lot easier. Because without him, it's like really stressful, and you're not able to deal with it. And whenever you're, whenever you come to God, he's ready, and he's ready for you. Like how I was waiting for Aubrey with open arms, he's waiting for you with open arms. He'll take all of that stuff, and I'm not saying that once you go to God, everything's gonna be hunky-dory, because it's not. You have to build your relationship back. You're not just going to get it back like that. Because you've left him for so long. So it's going to be a walk to get it back. And I swear I am not trying to tell you this just to lecture you. I'm telling you this because I've gone through it and I know how hard it is. I know that you can't walk through life without God and without knowing 
that he's with you because you can you can question him it's okay to question god like you can ask him questions like that's no a normal part of life don't think that you just have to be like oh well god did this so i guess i just have to go with it you can ask him and either he'll answer you and you'll get an answer or he'll tell you to wait and the waiting is the hard part sometimes the waiting is when you go into hiding because you've been waiting for so long so you just don't know for certain that he's there still and when you're not certain that's when the devil gets you so you have to always be prepared and i know you're not always just going to be prepared because that's not how that works you're never just going to be like oh yeah i got i got jesus i i can do this because you're not you're not always going to be prepared because when you think you're prepared and you think you're ready the devil's going to hit you with something brand spanking new that you do not know nothing about and I'm, I swear I'm not trying to lecture y'all. I feel like I am. <laughs> but, like, I'm, I'm just saying this because it's hard trying to walk through life. And it's never going to be just 100% I know. You're never going to know. The only person that actually, and he's not even a person, the only being that knows everything is God. Because even at the end of the Bible, Jesus doesn't know when he's coming back. The Holy Spirit don't know when he's coming back. God knows when he's sending Jesus back. The two people that he is closest with, the Holy, the people that he is one with, don't even know. So how are we going to know? And we can't say, well, if you don't answer my question, I'm just not going to leave. If you don't answer my question, I'm just done. Because he's not going to answer your question. You can't act like a little... Oh, I know it all, miss, because you don't know it all. Y'all don't know nothing compared to what God knows. And y'all have to come to the realization of that, that you're not going to know. When God comes into your life, he'll be with you, and you can trust that he'll be with you. But if you let him go, he's going to be waiting, but you have to go back to him. <coughs> and you have to go back to him, meaning that he's going to be, he's going to stand there. He's not going to try and come into your life and like make you say, I'm going to make you believe in me, blah, 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 blah. He's not going to do that, y'all. That's not going to happen. You have to be prepared for what God is doing in your life. And, and that's just something that y'all like know. So y'all can like start playing. And so the worship team is going to start playing. And... As you're walking through life, I know you're going to hide, but try to, when you're hiding, know when you're hiding, and know that God is going to be with you through it. Know that God is going to be waiting with open arms, and try not to question him so much on everything. I know it's hard because you might be like, oh, well, why is this happening in my life? Why is God doing this to me if everybody else has it so easy? If this isn't happening in their life, why does it happen? in mind. But everybody's going through something different. Everybody's going through something that they don't know 100% about. And we have to just trust God even when we might not continue to believe in Him. When we have our moments of I don't think I believe in God anymore. We have to just try. Just keep trying. Just push through the day one day at a time. Thank you. 